I'm going to, from here, start a new layer. And using this icon on the right top right of any layer, you can click and drag it to any part of the hierarchy you want. I'm going to click on it and rename it. I'm going to name it uh, Midground Trees because it's still going to be part of the midground and I will merge it with my mountains when I'm ready. I am going to pick another one of these textured brushes. This will probably work. I will get into... I like to start with what I have on screen as a base and then kind of adjust from there. Now I'm going to set up a, a land mess, essentially. And I'm going to try to think of it as having different elevations. Uh, it's not just a flat piece of land so that it makes it a little more interesting maybe there's some cutting into the next area also going to indicate maybe some closer trees this mass will represent trees way in the uh, in the background even though we're considering it uh, are technically our mid-ground, but compared to our foreground, this will be pretty far back. And you can make your forest or as thick or as lush as you want. Uh, and I'm doing this dark so that when I add uh, highlights to the top of the canopies, they'll really just pop and they'll have the illusion of depth. Um, and I'll do that by uh, picking my camo brush here on the texture. I'll pick a decent uh, a decent green here to kind of get that started. you see I'm not filling in the area and I'm not going opaque I'm just kind of lightly dashing this area and also I'll give it splashes very light indications of some other warmer colors uh, just to show that the Sun is hitting it that there's variation in these trees uh, even go as well as to pick some uh, oranges very lightly uh, just indicating let me go back a few steps I noticed uh, that splotch there you go didn't lose anything too important kind of just hit I'll take my pencil tool and I'll pick one of my darker colors uh, maybe I'll actually go deeper brown and uh, kind of pick and draw in little exceptions, little taller. These are would be giant tree trunks in the background, perhaps. And I'll give those some foliage as well. And I'll zoom in a little. I try to stay far back as far back as possible, but you do need to get in there, and especially when you're doing these finer details. And now I'll go in again with another one of my textured brushes. Um, use my favorite camo because it's pretty versatile. I'll bring the brush size pretty small. Um, I'll make it kind of opaque and I will I will lay in this these trees you can see I'm
just going very lightly. I shouldn't actually go up the length of the tree, probably. I'll go a few steps back, remember. Sometimes you get you get caught up in painting and you wind up in areas you shouldn't. You gotta remember to go back. Maybe this side will be a little denser. I'll go with a little thicker brush. So remember, we want variety. We don't want just the same thing on both sides. And I'll switch my brush again to something a little more standard. That's a big one. And I do like to add these little um, extensions of the land, kind of help tie things together. Even though this is hinting at our foreground, they won't really contain our foreground elements just yet. I'll build those on another layer. And looking at it, I'm also zooming out again. I'm going to go back into my mountain, maybe just chisel a little more. And this is all about personal preference. Uh, what's important is that you got a nice dynamic shape and it has interest. I'm going to go back, uh, briefly grab my camo, and just grab something to highlight uh, the trees that I had built. Remember to close this, get it out of your way. Space to zoom in. Go to a nice small brush. Oh, gotta remember to go on the right layer. Notice that was happening behind. Click on my mid-ground trees. There you go. And just lightly, lightly dab. Bring the opacity down a little bit. Zoom out again. And even still, I like to go in and add a few more points of interest. Careful, I'm using the pencil tool right now, and I do this to add very deliberate lines. You know, maybe there are some rocks uh, back here. Um, I'm adjusting my, I'm using the puck to adjust my size, but I think I want to go maybe darker. I'm color picking from here just to get some rock forms. And I'll blend these in using using our smear tool. And I'll just kind of work that in there. And then I can go back with my pencil and maybe just cover it up partially. Add a couple on the other side as well. Just, I mean, when you get close to it, it might be big boulders, which they probably are, they look like to me. But from here, they're just tiny little pebbles. Okay. Now, we have an established middle ground. I think I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to call this my foreground. And we can use our foreground to create framing devices. So I'm going to first start with 
Let's see, maybe I'll use one of our synthetic paint brushes. Something that has some grit to it. Yeah, that'll work. And again, I'm going to pick from what we already established. I'm going to go with the nice big brush. And I see it's mixing the paint. And we can make this work to our advantage. Maybe load a little more paint. The grow opacity. This big old mass will wind up looking like some cool grass. We'll switch our brushes. Uh, let's try something like this. Yeah, this is a little more opaque. That's cool. And now I'll go in with my favorite camo brush back in textures. And I'll pick a decent green to start with. Actually, maybe I, I always like to sample from what I've already done. I'll go with a large brush. Start creating these planes here. And I'm almost treating them the same way I would treat the, uh, the mountains. You know, there's shadow plane and there's a light plane. want to vary the color a little, add a little bit of yellow where we can, especially where the sun's hitting it the most. Maybe there's moss growing over rocks. We can always get our chisel brush. Add some rocks in the foreground. We can get our smear. Oh, up the opacity. And this is just a good way to kind of start pushing and pulling colors a little bit. You can always get away from this. Doesn't always get the results I want. That's okay. I don't even need to go as far back as you might think. All we need to do is create an interesting graphic. Color pick what we've already worked from. Use our texture brushes. I have rocks here, but maybe there's more moss growing on top of them. You know, sometimes you're working on a particular part and it's not working for you right away, but you know, sometimes you have to have the courage to see it through. So don't get caught up with the racing over and over again. Um, at, you know, just go a few strokes ahead, see if it works. If not. Just a couple of undos will do it if you could paint in or out the rest. Use some smaller pebbles. Using my pencil here to just pull out a few areas of grass. I'm going to go back into my middle ground. I'm going to go back into my brushes here. And I'm going to, let's see, I think I'm going to use my smear. I'm going to start 
kind of shaking this area up a little bit so that it looks like it would be uh, reflective of the foliage that's closest to the water. Not too concerned with this. You can always add more land mass. I'm also going to uh, I'm going to switch this out for uh, one of the smudge tools. Sometimes it just works better. Yeah. They all have their advantages. Some work in particular areas better than others. That's fairly interesting. And let's see, so what I'll do also now is I'll take my pencil, pick one of these lighter colors, and I can show where the water meets the land just by indicating these uh, contact lines. And I'm also going to pick some of the darkest areas to contrast it. So the white butts up right against the darkest shadows there. Um, also, don't be afraid to just get back in there and work up areas that you feel like might need it. I can see a couple of spots that could use some some attention just a little more filler a little more spruces of color and I'm gonna try to keep this under six layers so if I find that I'm going over I'll I'll just uh, merge some layers. Just erase some of that. 